Hi, my name is Billy Muty. This is the first song project I've ever made. His name is Biden. He is a little bear.
Hello, so Introduction to Sculpture students um, recently did this project and they were assigned uh, the task of making a garment out of a non-garment material. So the material could not be fabric, it had to be something that you would normally not make clothing out of. And their guidelines were to make it life-size and it had to have enough detail um, in the design so that it looked believable, like it could be worn. It didn't have to be um, it didn't have to be actually available to wear, but it had to look as if it, it was something that could be worn. Hi, my name is Catherine DeLong and I'm a junior. The dress that I decided to make was a caution tape ball gown. I made it out of caution tape, fabric for a base, and bubble wrap. And the reason that I chose it is because I was actually joking around one day and I said, wouldn't it be funny if I made a ball gown out of caution tape? And then Mr. Charlotte introduced the project and I was like, well, there's my opportunity to do that. And this is my caution tape ball gown. Okay, so my name's uh, Dan Cody. I'm a junior here at GSAA. I made this trash bag biker vest. My idea was just to like bikers, kind of give like a gross image, you know? So I figured a trash bag, trash, you know, kind of a good aesthetic. Basically just took a trash bag, cut into the shape of the vest, then used cutouts from magazines and uh, paper and a little bit of paint for the skull there to make a cool little vest. I'm a senior and this is my garment project. So I found this like bag of styrofoam fabric like sheet thing. So I um I cut it up and then I hand weaved it. Um and I was gonna make a sweater, but I didn't have enough stuff to make it, so I made a hat instead and I hand sewed it together. Um and I have little flowers. I don't know how easy you can see it because it's all white, but that's what I did. <laughs> Hello, my name is Elise and this is my bonnet project. It is a dress made out of leaves at the top and then feathers at the bottom, which I chose because I wanted to give it a very like nature-y type feel. And I think it worked pretty well. For this project, I decided to base a ballet costume off of Swan Lake, a black swan. I used garbage bags, feathers to represent all the attributes that go into this costume. I specifically cut out different decorations and things like that. I also cut out feathers from garbage bags as well. And I constructed it with cardboard to keep the shape of the skirt. In the back, there's rivets that I made out of hot glue, and then I just laced it up with a long string of garbage bag.
The photography students were encouraged to research the life and works of a master photographer in any field they wished. Then they had to select one of those works to recreate and deliver with the same mood and message of the original image. My name's Liberty and my master is Annie Leibovitz. Annie is a, a particularly well-known photographer, especially for her intimate portraiture. She has done many famous portraits over the years with a lot of celebrities. For my recreation, I used a lot of lighting techniques to try to mimic the way she does it. I did a lot of lighting levels trying those out. I did different ISOs to try to get the clarity better. As you can see with my picture, there is a lot of light and shadow contrast, so that was pretty important. The field Paul Strand specialized in was landscape photography. His style is remarkable and recognizable to anyone that touches work. Recreating my photo was a bit interesting. I actually didn't have the chance to take a photo outside because of the snow and rain, so I tried the next best thing, taking a photo of my plant inside. It was a little difficult to find the right settings, as on program the shutter speed is way too long, but eventually I found the perfect settings, and I got to work. Natalia Seth is an Instagram influencer, and she creates very childlike photos. I started off trying to create um, the face in the photo at first, but that didn't really work because I don't have much experience in Photoshop, so I decided to overlap the photo itself. My artist is Mike Moult. He's a professional macro photographer. He started off doing it as a hobby, but then turned it into a business by making workshops and doing an online class. My recreation photo is very similar to his, whereas it has a frog as the main subject, and it really captures the idea and the essence of the frog. Josiah was an Hungarian French photographer, sculptor, medalist, writer, and filmmaker. He is best known for his black and white night photography, the stark black and white contrast, and street photography, capturing revealing images of people over the night. His photography was known to be moody and expressionistic. My recreation I wanted to capture the look of how the light appears against the dark of the night. I also wanted it to appear as it being something you come across walking down the street at night. I wanted the essence to match the inquisitorial, mysterious, and gloomy feeling of the original, which I feel like they captured the basics of. Lastly, I wanted to capture the idea of the light being the focal point of the image with the shadows and the building being the accompaniment. Joseph Zudek is a photographer who does a lot of still life photography. Most of his works are in black and white and is somber. He went to go serve in the army for a year. He was on the Italian front during that. He lost his right arm. Due to that, he went to hospitals trying to recover, which is where he started to take photos. He started to take photos out of pure boredom. He took the photos for magazines and hints for himself. They were all in black and white and almost looked painted. When I was doing this recreation, I had some trouble. I didn't entirely like my first take, so I went to the bathroom with a jar and a flower. I grabbed some water and placed it into the jar and put some water in it. I grabbed a flashlight and held it up as I took the photo. I wished it was a little bit darker and looked a little bit more painted, but I still liked how it came out. It was almost like a happier, less somber type of feel. Hi, my name is Al, and for my photography project, I decided to do it on Zdzisław Bekinski. Bekinski was a Polish artist who was known for his abstract and gothic photography. His art was considered controversial because it didn't fall in the lines of the pure art propaganda that was known in the Soviet Union. His career in photography didn't last too long before he decided to become a painter. Before I started recreating Bekinski's self-portrait, I knew it was going to be a very hard feat. The way that Bekinski took the photo makes it look like the cameraman is in front in instead of in the reflection of a mirror. I started off breaking up a few small mirrors into pieces and assembling them on a larger mirror that was still intact. I spent about an hour rearranging the pieces just to get them right so I could get the right angle. And then it took about another hour to sit down, try to get the right lighting, try to get the right angle, and try to get a picture that looked similar to Beginsky's. Hi, this is Lars Rice. I just want to present my photo rendition of a few of Andy Warhol's works. I, myself, am a big fan of Andy Warhol, and I'm sure that a lot of you at home know exactly what Andy Warhol is. I began a little bit of a delve into his photo work, especially a picture of a Basquiat that he made, taking several pictures and making them into one. 
I myself like to call it the Frankenstein image because it has no real official name as far as I'm aware. When I was taking the image, I took several pictures of my father sitting in a chair in a dark room, and I used the flash for the most part to illuminate him. And I took a picture of his head, torso, leg, his other leg, and kind of just taped it together, and I thought it looked very spiffy, especially with the lighting and whatnot. I was also a big fan of the way he did angles and his lighting. A lot of it was dark, used a lot of his, uh, a lot of the flash from his camera, and oftentimes it's just stuff you wouldn't take pictures of, which was really a big thing to me, though it was very inspiring. This one over here that I did, mostly just because I thought it was a little bit silly, uh, was just a picture of a bunch of urinals. I was just thinking to myself, well, I have a friend who works at Dunkin' Donuts. I can take a picture of the bathroom there. And when I did take the picture, I was kind of shocked with how it came out because it feels both like you're at home and also at the same time feels very empty and doesn't feel home-like at all, which I just thought was a very swell aesthetic.